eldest? I am the oldest girl. I had I have two older brothers. But were they get they up are, with you? They're seven and nine years older than me. So by but the time I there. even became aware of, of myself, they were out of the home. So she was dropping a 10-year-old off with other little kids at the college library. At the college campus. Campus. And so I had to learn to read the college map, oh my find God. the food court where the students ate, the student union. I also had, I started out at Detroit Main Public Library on Cass Avenue in Detroit. I'm from Michigan, town. And... <laughs> Of course, I gotta rep my city. I love my city. My city is very traumatized too. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so uh, I was dropped off at the main library with my siblings, and that opened up a whole new world because there were people there. Right, people, people there. there. I could start imprinting on people, and not right. only were there people there, but there were people of influence there. That would come for children's programs and things like that. And so I started asking, hey, can I stay for this? Can we stay? So my mother would, she would just leave us all day. She had a friend of hers that uh, fixed computers and he create, he rebuilt a old computer for her and brought it to the house. So we would all get one hour of computer time. Mm. You know? He had really severe carpal tunnel in both hands and wore braces on her hands so she couldn't use them to type mm. and she was kind of suffering through class not knowing how to get her work done and I had all of these handwritten stories and note on notebook paper and I stapled the, them together like little books and put them in these big binders but the uh pages were falling apart I had them for many years and, you know, since I was small, and the pages were falling apart. So I decided I was going to learn how to type on these little typing games and put my stories on a disc. Right. That changed my life. And I did not expect how that would have happened because what it did was it gave me access to my mother's college education. Mm -hmm. She needed someone to help her uh, type, proofread, and edit her <laughs> essays, her research papers, I mean, her opinion papers and whatnot. And here I am, I sit down at the computer and I had been playing these little typing games and stuff. Sit down at the computer, I could type 111 words a minute wow. with a 98% accuracy. And it sounded like drills on the keyboard. <laughs> And my parents had never really paid attention to that before. So in this situation, this was before we moved to the place where my mother had multiple properties on this block. She owned multiple properties on this block. But this was Your prior mother owned to that. Pro- wow. She did. She owned multiple properties for most of my life. So, so, so that's where you guys, the, the children lived in one of her properties. Yes. Exactly. I get it. So I get it now. we moved to that place when I turned about 12. Gotcha. So just prior to that, we were living on the east side of Detroit on the other side. And uh, I, I was, so they were in the same house as us. That's the point I was getting to. Right, so they right. were in the living they were room. They in the same house. Peter was behind them. I'm sitting there. Dur, 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 dur. And my father yells at me. He's like, hey, stop doing that to the computer. You're going to tear it up. He doesn't know that you're typing. I'm not playing on there with cars or nothing. What, you know? You're typing. Please look at me before you yell at me. Right. You know? <laughs> That's crazy. Dad, I'm typing. I'm typing my stories. Most, both my parents say, not like that. You're not. There's no way you're typing stories like that. So my mother, she had worked for the city of Detroit for a while, uh, driving dump trucks. And she actually fell out of the cab of one of the dump trucks and injured Mm. her back. Wow. So she had been in wheelchairs for a very long time, like most of my life at that point. Mm. And um, she got up out of the seat that she was in and hobbled over to the computer to see what it was that I was doing. It was that serious for her, you know? 
and watched me type. I never had to look at the keyboard. I could read and type at the same time. And with a 98% accuracy, every 100 words, I might have missed one or two. You know? So she gave, that's when she gave me her paper. Gia, what's going on? It's your boy, Quan John, here reading Motivational Motives. It's a bona fide manuscript. It's a book of real life parables, quintessential quotes, and reasons to reflect. It can be purchased in Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes and Nobles, and over 40,000 international mom and pop shops. So get your copy, 100. And I became her proofreader and editor at 11. 11. So, yes. And she was attending a local community college. Soon she connected with other students that had late work. And they're like, well, my daughter types 110 what? plus words a minute. So she can get your research, your 10 page research paper typed in a couple hours and ready for you to turn in tomorrow. So next thing you know, I'm being given papers from other students and I'm reading their stories, their opinions, their information, right? And then my mom calls me one day and says, I have a student here from Pakistan who needs help with understanding English grammar so she can write. Can you help her with that? I'm like, I don't know. I'm 12. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, can't I can try. This, I can this talk to her. Right. My mother goes through her associate's degree. She gets work study to work in the tutor lab. She becomes a tutor. Mm -hmm. And then she ascends from her tutor position to the head of the tutoring lab at the right. school. Right. And then becomes an academic advisor. So she's <laughs> raising through the ranks. Right. Meanwhile. She's going, she's moving. And we're starving. Yeah, and we're, you know, my, I had and you siblings helped the grade who are, oh, man, this is who are illiterate. My siblings oh. grew up illiterate. They illiterate? didn't have these sparks. Hold up. The siblings couldn't read and, 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 and mommy's read. going to school? And my mother was going to school, educating herself and helping other people with their helping educational Other people with their education? But they got where the they were reading? going oh in life God. with their education, she was helping I'm like, them figure I'm it out. Gasted. While we were sitting there without hope. Mm. Wow. I can't, I, man. Okay. And All then right. it became yeah. a her word against ours kind of thing. Mm. Right. Situation. Absolutely it would be. Absolutely. Because now she's built herself up to start having credibility. She's getting right. A's in school and she's getting honors and she's getting acclaim and she's getting all the things that a narcissist would love best. Recognition, right? From recognition. recognition from people recognition. that don't That's know they her. Love. They don't know her personally. They don't, they don't really know, know her at all. what life is like for her kids. But she talks about how she has nine kids and I did this and I did that and I you know and she is lying through her teeth move from this one place to the next where now I'm parenting six, six kids you know <sighs> I'm parenting these kids for her mm -hmm. while she's ascending the ranks right so she goes from associates to bachelors and I'm proofreading and editing her bachelor's degree paper is it two 12 years old. Okay. You're just absorbing knowledge. Just getting all the knowledge. She goes right. into her master's degree program. And I'm helping her with her master's papers. And I get to a point where in her master's work, I'm like, I don't really understand what this format is for the writing now. It's not APA or right. MLA anymore. It's something different, some kind of hybrid. You'll have to find someone else to proofread and edit these. Mm. And she was shocked. I was just turning 13 at that time. So she was mad? She wasn't mad. She was just surprised that I didn't know. You surprised? She was very surprised that I didn't know how to do it. 
Wow. <laughs> and that she had to <laughs> finally start. So because she was surprised because she knew I was smart enough to, to have done it for two years. She didn't mm. expect that there was a limit. Um, because my education at that point had a limit. Right. Right. Okay. So graduate school. Just graduate, graduate school. school. Graduate it was school. graduate school. On, some now. things in graduate school I still had to be exposed right. to in order You're to 13. understand. Mm. And without being instructed, I couldn't, I had no footing. Right. Okay. So uh, associate's degree is easy enough. Bachelor's right. degree is easy right. enough. You can right. muddle through that, take you a little while, and you get right. through it. Graduate school is a little bit different. Okay. So, and I'm 13. <laughs> 13. So, should I pause here? But it you know, says, oh, yeah, I need a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. I need a minute. I'll pause. Go ahead. <laughs> Like, uh, not, I mean, everybody can agree, and I'm talking to our viewers here too. Everybody can agree that the story is insane. But it's not even the narcissism of your mother, the sheer level of your IQ. That's not even the most shocking. It's, okay, maybe it is. I'm going to shut up. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep going. I'm done. I mean, I, okay, so after you tell her, yo, you know what, I can't do this, it's master degree work, when did you get to the left, to the point where you was like, you know what, I, um, I want to get my high school diploma, how, how did, where did that come from, and how did you even, you know, where'd you look, what'd you do? When I tell you that my countenance at all times was childlike play, right, I had no expectations for what I was going to receive or not receive. Right. My my greatest wishes at that point was to have a best friend mm. that I could at times spend the night at her house and they could spend right. the night at mine. And I wanted to have a normal life like I saw on TV. Right. That's what I wanted. I wanted to have a life to live. Right. That's all I wanted. And like, as long as I was, doing that being alive and I kept opening my eyes and waking up like okay it's another one of these days and I would just go through and I would do what I can I would, you know comfort my siblings and you know teach kids how to use the potty and you know encourage them to walk and like you know encourage them to walk how old because was the while my mother was in school she had two more kids Mm. Two more kids while she was in school. How so, old was the youngest kid you were taking care of? The youngest one just finished getting weaned. She was actually weaned by being given to me. And I had to rock this baby and take care of her for those three days where the baby is just unsuitable. Uh -huh. mm. I can't, I can't even outside of the presence of her mom. I can I can't. This is my fault. Go ahead. Because right now I'm like, I'm, I, my emotion is, is so. How did you get out? How did you get out? Let's talk about that. All right. So yeah. I'm 13 and I'm bumping through life. I don't know anything at 13. You know, 13 year olds, they don't know right. anything. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. But I, you know, I made worlds in my head. So in my head, I made neighborhoods. I made cities. I made circumstances that could change and dimensions that could be shifted and different things. And I wished and I hoped and I dreamed, okay? So my mother one day took me to a friend of hers um, tutoring program. She had decided to try to do some tutoring and stuff because her friend was offering it to her for free or something, or for very low cost or something. And um, I'm sitting there, and I'm we're getting ready to go, I think. We're getting ready to leave this program and go home or something. And uh, because it had gotten to a point where I was like, you know, I, I just, I have to have something. 
So it, my, as long as I kept pressing that, my mom felt like she had to find something to shut me up. Right. Okay. Right. So that's why I was in that situation. But then her friend came up to her and she said, I have like three 17 year old seniors who are going into dual enrollment in the uh, community college. And I'm so excited, her friend was saying, you know, this is my first graduating class. My mother had always wanted a school, mm. always wanted a school. So at this point, she had bought a building on the corner of our block. So we had left the old house where they were with us, went to the new, new spot where she had the house we were staying in. She had the house next door. She had the lots next to it. They got the alley behind there. Across the street, there were three lots and a house right there. So she got all that property there and this building. And she starts renovating this building. I tell, no, I'll tell you, when she bought groceries, it was a celebration. And when but she, she could buy land, us, she can not land, she can buy property, but she can buy bread land. and butter. I'm telling you. So I can't was, and even at that time, it wasn't clear to me that I was being neglected. It's still the, absolutely. You, absolutely didn't not. you don't know her better. I had no, I had no frame of reference still because psychology is a completely different school of thought. You don't pick that up like that unless you're taught it, right? But this was my introduction is this got me closer. So I, my mother tells her friend out of jealousy, I bet my 13 year old daughter is smart, smarter than all of your high school seniors. Wow. And she figured out how to put me in dual enrollment. My mother in the 80s had established a uh, Islamic school. Mm. Now, I'll tell you, my parents, my mother and my father, they were Orthodox uh, Muslims. Right. Okay. So they... But I'm saying that with the caveat that they had severe mental illnesses. And absolutely. Is not how Islam is. Islam not, is not absolutely like that. they have mental I don't, illnesses. I've never met a Muslim family like them. I have never, you know, never. They never taught us the faith. Mm. They didn't pray with us. My mother told me that God didn't even care what was on my mind or on my heart. Oh, my God. Mm. And unless I read the Quran at 12... Now, this is not Muslims. Do not demonize Muslims. Absolutely not. Not right? at all. This was my parents' mental health. But she told oh, me, man. at the age of accountability at 12, you can start reading the Holy Quran. And then God, when you decide to take the Shahada and become a Muslim, then God will love you and he will listen to you. Is what I was oh, my told. God. Mm. So I grew up believing that God did not love me. And he didn't want to have anything to do with me. And subtly, God planted seeds in me that said something totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know what I was going to say, though? You said, <laughs> out of jealousy, your mom enrolled you in the dual enrollment program. That's the narcissist thing to do, I swear. It's like, okay, all this time. But she had established a school, an Islamic school, in the 80s. She had her seals. She had... Her 501c3, she had all of the ability to document all of my self-study. And when necessary, she was able to provide proof that I was able to take the placement test at Wayne County Community College District. <laughs> and I did. And I placed in the same class as the seniors. Are you, are you serious? Without any formal With no education. formal education. None. 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 Well, let me tell you. I had one month in fifth grade and one month in sixth grade because that, CPS suspected there might have been something going she had to on. She put you in school for, the, for that month. For that month, for those years, that's all I got. And I'm Just quite enough sure to find out that I was weird. 
and I, this was a happy I was out time of for you when you was in school for those months, wasn't it? Huh? When you were in school for those for that month, you were happy, weren't you? I was ecstatic. I know you were. I know you there were. were. And, kids and, it, and it breaks my, my heart. Age. There were kids my it, age. It breaks I my was heart. A weird, I was weird, just like other weird kids. Right. Mm. That was an epiphany that I mm. had a group I could fit in. But emotionally, I was not ready. Right. Absolutely I was never not. prepared to be a middle schooler. Absolutely not. So emotionally, everything I heard where I wasn't doing something properly, which I had no academic background. I had no None. writing in a notebook the proper way and putting your name and date and all that. Right. And holes None going this side. And that was a mind explosion for me for those two mm. months. Yeah. So that was my only experience with school. So, so you placed I, in the college I didn't even and tell you all of that. So, so you placed huh? in the college and you started college when you placed in the college. And I started college. I took the same class with those kids. There were adults in the class taking it because it's community college, you know. Once you hit 18, you're in, going to school, and you know, maybe mm -hmm. you didn't do the four a year, you decided to come home and do local community college, and those were my peers. So you actually That's went to class. class, you went to I class went to class. Thank you.